Hey everybody, this morning I'm going to be working on this little C10 right here behind me. Uh, it's a good friend of mine's truck, him and his dad, they've been building the truck for the past few years. It's got a built small block with four L80 behind it. Um, running Holly Sniper EFI, it's got a Boyd's welding tank with an air motive pump mounted in the chassis. Um, but this morning I'm going to be building a little fuel line, it's going to go between the fuel pressure regulator and the Holly throttle body. Um, all the rest of the fuel system's already been done on the truck, so it already had a feed and a return line. Um, so, you know, whoever done it done a great job, uh, but I'm not sure really what brand hose they went with. So my go-to is always Pro-Lite 350. Um, there's plenty of options out there. Pro-Lite 350 is made by Earl's. I've just had good luck with it over the years. It's easy to work with. I like the hose ends that you can buy for it. Um, another option would be PTFE, and I'm going to go over some of the details with it, but um, PTFE is just a, it's a braided style hose usually you'll see that has a black nylon coating that goes on the outside it has a teflon inner liner um holds up to a lot of different you know oils and e85 and different stuff you can use it for almost anything um, but the flip side of it is it's just a pain in the butt to deal with it's hard to put the fittings together once you get in the rhythm of doing them it's not too bad but with pro light 350 and the pro light 350 matching hose ends it's just easy installs it takes a lot of you know a lot of the time out of it for me is clean looking they have you know different colors different finishes and I, I just had good luck with it so this morning we'll show you the differences in those i'll probably show you installing some of the pro light 350 and then i'll show you a little clip of it once i put it on the truck thanks as you can see i've already got the um, tape mark on it and usually i like to tape it up wherever i'm going to cut it at and that way it just helps the the braided keep from fraying so i'm basically just gently I will put it in my vise and just put enough pressure just to hold it where it doesn't pull out. Um, like I said, you can do it with a Ziz wheel, chop saw, hacksaw, just whatever you have. Generally, I do it with a Ziz wheel, but again, I'm going to show you how to do it with basic hand tools that way you would do it in your garage. So I just put a little bit of pressure on this. And usually I'll do a couple pulls toward me just to get a good start on it. And then you pretty much just go through it. I mean, it, it cuts fairly easy. Once you're all the way through it, you can just pull the tape off and you're ready to assemble the ends on the fittings. Basically, these are just the standard Earl's Pro Light 350 hose ends. These are the swivel ends. Um, but basically you just pull the nut off, stick the nut down over the actual hose itself. And usually if you screw the hose counterclockwise, you can, let's see, maybe try clockwise. If you screw it clockwise, it generally goes in there fairly easy and then if you watch on the inside, you can actually see when it bottoms out inside the nut. You need to go just a little bit more on this one. Sometimes it can be a little bit aggravating. flashlight out so I can actually see in here. Yeah, this one needs a little bit more. And sometimes you even have to press down on a flat surface to, to get them to get flush. This one's going to get a little bit aggravating. Alright, so once you get the nut slid down, basically you take your fitting with the little small barb on it and get it started. You can usually feel when, once it gets inside the hose and it just keeps some pressure on it, get the thread started. Generally, I will put just a little bit of WD-40 on the threads some type of penetrant. I would 
like, and you can do this two different ways. You can actually just use two adjustable wrenches. I usually put the, uh, the fitting itself in a vise. Just barely put a little pressure on it. And then I'll take an AN wrench or an adjustable wrench. And then slowly, slowly screw the fitting down on the swivel end. And I'm sure somebody's gonna fuss because I didn't put tape on my adjustable wrench so I didn't scratch the fitting. But truthfully, if you're careful, they usually don't scratch. They actually have a fairly thick anodized coating on them. And they seem to do fairly well. You see that one has bottomed out, but I'm just gonna double check with this wrench hand just to put a little pressure on it. Now you see that's basically how you put a piece of Pro-Lite 350 hose together with a hose end. Um, basically on this side I'm going to repeat the same thing. This one's going to have a straight one. This one had a, uh, I believe these were 60 degree fittings and I said, I'll put that on the uh, regulator to the throttle body and we'll be in good shape. As I mentioned before, PTFE is another option on um, plumbing on some of this stuff. Um, my go-to with it is Fregola. Um, they do have a great product. I have nothing negative to say about it other than it's just super aggravating putting it together. Um, basically, it's the same style fitting as before on the Pro-Lite 350. The only difference is you have a, a ferrule that goes up on the actual fitting and then the nut slides over it. As you can see in the ferrule, it has a notch down at the bottom that basically the hose has to bottom out in. But the difference is on the hose itself, as you see, it's got a black nylon outer coating. Let's see if this thing can focus. It's got a, a steel liner inside and then it's got the Teflon inner liner. So basically, the ferrule actually has to be wedged between the steel and the Teflon on the inside. And that's where the hard part is. Um, you actually need to cut the nylon back on the outside about a quarter inch for the fitting to do right. Um, then you gotta put the nut over it, get it slid down where you can get the ferrule inside, and then put the fitting down in the hose and then slide the nut back over. And so, like I said, it's just, it's just a little bit more complicated for something to me that's personally I just don't see that much more benefit from it it does have its places and you know fortunately most of the stuff that I do is to me just not needed um, I've got a car right here this Camaro that I've been building I've actually plumbed the power steering system the transmission lines and the fuel system feed and return with PTFE um, and like I said, I've you know had great luck with it. It's done great. However, it is very aggravating putting it together. So, you know, some people probably tell me that I need to get with the times and start rolling with PTFE. But um, a lot of the other AN options to me is I don't know, just better suited um, for a lot of the projects that I do. You can see I got my hose finished and I've got it installed on the truck. Basically, it's just got a straight end coming off the line I made up for the throttle body. And it just kind of tucks down and it's got a 60 degree fitting on one side to my fuel pressure regulator. And I've made a small bracket that actually bolts the regulator off of the two bolt holes that hold the transmission dipstick on. And don't pay any attention to my wiring mess till I get all that cleaned up. But Basically, it just tucks down behind the engine a little bit, and it'll, I'll probably make some kind of little clamp that'll actually tie all three lines together. Um, but it worked out pretty good, and I'm happy with it, and everything should be clean. And fuel pressure regulator is easy to get to at this point, easy to adjust, and once you get it set, it's kind of set and good to go for that. But that pretty much wraps up the fuel system on this one, so I've got a few more, little more odd and end stuff to do, and we'll be ready to start wrapping up all the wiring for the truck. I like putting the front clip on, we're waiting on a stainless bolt kit for it. 
and as you can see it's going to be a pretty neat little patina truck not exactly sure what wheels he's going with yet but um, it's a be nice to raise the hood and see everything real nice and clean and then patina on the outside so As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment in the comment section. Um, if you've got any questions on any of the products used on the truck, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them or find out the answer. And I said, if you see anything else on the truck or anything else in the shop you want to see a video of or just any info on, just give me a shout. Thanks.